Sponsored by Brilliant. Apple has just announced that their 31st annual Worldwide Developers Conference, WWDC, will kick off virtually on Monday, June 22nd, 2020. And yeah, that's three weeks later than the usual date, but what's usual this year anyway? If you're not familiar with WWDC, affectionately known as DubDub, it's the big summer show where every year Apple announces updates to all of their operating systems and developer frameworks, which now include iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, watchOS, and of course, macOS. Some years, though not every year, Apple also announces new hardware. The new Mac Pro and Pro Display XDR, the iMac Pro and HomePod, MacBooks, iPads, even iPhones back in the day of Steve Jobs. These days, we also have a heavy emphasis on services as well, which are helping to move the needle for Apple even when the rest of the world is on hold. I'm gonna try to keep this short. Well, who am I kidding? Short-ish, because I've done a bunch of videos on potential announcements already. Hit subscribe to see those. And if you want deeper dives on anything I talk about here, just let me know which ones in the comments. But yes, shortish, promise, on it. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is the WWDC 2020 keynote preview. In a normal year, which means not this year, Tim Cook would come out on the WWDC keynote stage with his usual, good morning and welcome to WWDC. Talk about the developers in attendance from all the countries around the world, the students and scholarship winners, and then turn to business. Maybe services first. Apple Music and Apple Arcade seem to be humming along just fine. Apple News is doing a great job, but is still in only a tiny handful of countries, which when compared to the previous two is just really, really sad. I can't even imagine how just absolutely gross the international licensing must be for stuff like that, but it's also Apple's job to figure it all out. Same with Apple Pay Cash and Apple Card. They're still US only, and sure, the US banks are more competitive than most other banks on earth. And Goldman Sachs was about as desperate to get Apple's product as AT&T was to take the original iPhone, sight unseen. But international customers already feel like we pay higher prices for fewer features. And anything Apple can do to push those high affinity services out to more and more of us would mean a lot. Apple TV Plus has produced some great content, but now, like most other streaming services, new seasons have been suspended, and it's unclear when additional programming will resume. With no catalog content to fall back on, like Netflix and Disney Plus have, and the original year of free services coming to an end, Apple's gonna need to decide what to do to keep the numbers up. Maybe a second year with the purchase of a 2020 Apple device? There's also the idea of an Apple bundle. Apple Prime, Apple Plus, basically all the services and even iCloud thrown in all together at a discounted price. Apple already does a very little of that for students, but it'd be a great thing for them to do for everyone. I guess the only question Apple has to answer is whether or not it would accelerate or decelerate their promise to double services revenue by the end of the year. In other words, would Apple make up for the discounts in volume? Let me know what you think in the comments. Last year, Tim Cook stayed up on stage for tvOS because TV Plus just dovetailed into it so nicely. In previous years, we got Eddie Q, Senior Vice President of Internet Services and members of the Apple TV team. Either way, there have been rumors of a new Apple TV box for a while now, one with an even more recent, more powerful processor to better handle things like overlaid HDR and next generation Apple Arcade games even one bundled with a gaming controller to try for some of that casual console market. Finally, I think we'll absolutely see a new box at some point, but how far Apple is willing to go with bundled gaming is another question. They make almost all the money in casual gaming on the iPhone and iPad already, but the living room still remains an area to conquer. For the last couple of years, we've gotten the Apple Watch pride bands at or around DubDub, but the show belongs to watchOS. Kevin Lynch, Vice President of Software, typically does the honors. Last year, tag teaming with Dr. Sumbul Desai, Vice President of Health. Because the Apple Watch is increasingly about health, rumors for this year include sleep tracking, which has been rumored ever since Apple bought Bedit a couple of years ago. Also, more fitness features, because there are always more fitness features. And a way to address mental health, the way the Apple Watch has been addressing physical health for years already, which would be absolutely terrific. And let me know in the comments if you wanna see a whole video on that. Of course, I'm hoping for something that'll make the Apple Watch even more independent from the iPhone, including and especially a way to set it up all on its own. 
Apple hasn't announced iPhones at WWDC for a decade, but Tim Cook has been handing off to Craig Federici, Senior Vice President of Software Engineering, to announce new versions of iOS for almost that long. Craig is so good on stage, I really hope Apple figures out a way for him to present virtually, in whatever way works, even, yes, via Memoji. I think we've nailed it. <laughs> iOS 14 is on tap for this year, and I think, new features aside, Apple has to make up for the hot mess of a launch that was iOS 13 beta last year by giving us something much closer to the solid, stable, smooth experience that was the iOS 12 beta. For me, every other tentpole is a distant second. That includes the rumored new fitness app, messaging features, AR lens app, default apps, and everything else. But let me know if you wanna see videos on any of those in the comments below. The one bit of related hardware I'm looking very much forward to is AirTags. Apple announced a new Find My Network at WWDC last year, and I've been waiting to see those little tags literally every season since. I've already done a video on them, so hit subscribe and check it out, but how Apple is gonna present them sell them, and especially reassure all of us about the privacy involved with them is something I really, really wanna see. What everyone else probably wants to see though is the new less expensive AirPods and even newer, more expensive AirPods Studio or whatever Apple ends up calling the over the ear models. With Senior Vice President of Worldwide Marketing, Phil Schiller doing the honors. Drop a like if that's top of your list. Jaws. Vice President of Product Marketing updated both the small and large iPads Pro at WWDC 2017, but the low-end iPad was updated last September and the Pros just over a month ago. That leaves the Air and Mini, but Apple's been content to leave them for years before anyway. So, iPad OS. Craig Federighi stayed up on stage to announce the first version of iPad OS at WWC last year, which was also the 13th version because it's still based heavily on iOS. And that means this year we'll get the 14th version. One of the biggest rumors for it was full on pointer and cursor support, but we got that with iPad OS 13.4. The other is pro apps, namely Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and most apropos for DubDub, Xcode. If Apple's been doing in private what Adobe's been doing in public beta with Photoshop for iPad, we could see real but not full versions of some or all of those come June. The only real question I have is how but not full those versions turn out to be. And by that, I mean fully independent apps or more like companion apps that work with the versions on the Mac. John Turnis, Vice President of Hardware, has been handling Mac announcements for a while now. From the Mac Pro last year to the iMac Pro a couple of years ago. And yeah, the iMac line in general and the iMac Pro especially are more than a little long in the tooth. So updates there would be great to see. The current version of Mac OS 10.15 Catalina introduced by Craig Federighi last year has been just as painful as iOS 13. More even when you consider the loss of 32-bit games and plugins for people who loved and depended on them. And the annoyance of the new security and privacy model for people used to the relative freedom of traditional Mac OS. After 10.15, it feels like Apple really needs a make good with 10.16, a software version of the new Magic Keyboard, so to speak. Of course, what everyone is really waiting for is what everyone has been waiting for for years now. Any sign or signal that Apple is getting ready to move any part of the Mac lineup to their own custom in-house ARM processors. You know, like the ones in the iPhone and iPad that have been running roughshod over the entire silicon industry going on a decade now. I did a whole show with Dr. Ian Cutris of Enantech talking about just that. Hit subscribe and check it out. Apple's automation efforts are still underway, but probably still a ways off. We'll certainly hear more about augmented reality, especially with LiDAR now on the iPad Pro. And rumor has it coming soon to the iPhone Pro. What about Apple Glasses, Reality OS, Starboard, and everything that comes next? Probably also still coming next rather than now. Though LiDAR and the AR apps we'll be getting starting this year are rocketing us towards it. Same with the artificial intelligence that binds them both together under senior vice president John Gianandrea, whose organization I think will end up being as important to the next decade of Apple as Silicon has been under senior vice president Johnny Saruji for the last one. Which is also why I think Brilliant is so important. See, Brilliant has this new introduction to neural networks, the kind that allows computers to program themselves and are used for everything from face ID to portrait mode to Siri to memory management to, well, literally everything. It's amazing, amazing. For example, you can wire up just 50 neurons and using that type of feedback, build a network that's capable of classifying handwritten digits. That's exactly what Scribble does on the Apple Watch. 
Whether you're a student looking to get ahead while school's out, a professional who wants to brush up on the latest and most important topics, or someone who just wants to learn how all this stuff we're gonna see at DubDub is all gonna work, Brilliant is here for you. Especially right now where we're all just kinda stuck right here. To learn more, literally to get more to learn, go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and sign up for free, for free. Be one of the first 200 people and you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for your support. So that's everything I expect to see at DubDub, but now I wanna hear what you expect to see. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell gizmo so we can hang out and chat in the comments for the first hour right after the video goes live, and then hit up those comments and let me know. Thanks for watching, and for more on AirTags, check out the explainer right here, or here. I can never get that right. See you next video.